Welcome to Revlog. Again. Again. This is take two. <laughs> and today, uh, in both take one and take two, Pastor Aaron is under the weather. <laughs> still. Still under the weather. And Pastor Brian is going to carry the weight. At the ready to take up any slack <laughs> for any shortcomings in the vocal abilities of Aaron Hufty. Okay, I'm just going to sit here and watch. Sit, just, please. It's, it's yeah. worth it. You're, you're, you're welcome to. <laughs> you, you, you sounded an awful lot like a radio DJ there. It, and and oh, that is in your past. It is in my past. That's right. Yes. The, yes so, you, I mean, you were the, like the, the 1 a.m. college DJ playing all your favorite yeah, hits, that's right? True. Yeah. It, what was your handle? It, it was just... It was just Brian. That's it. <laughs> it was. That's, that's where you went wrong. There's it, more there. No, there's <laughs> not. It, it, really, that's that's all. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's Brian again. <laughs> that's great. Know. Maybe we should get Brian on the radio again. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm I'm tuning into that one. Who's on your heart tonight? <laughs> Delilah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> I walked into this. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. To, to, today, uh, we're studying 1 Kings 18. This is, this is Elijah. Elijah. Uh, and the fire of God falling from heaven. And Please. <laughs> licking up the water. Right. Um, Aaron has already filed a sauce complaint, but we'll let him do that on his That's own right. time. That's right. So, Brian. It, it, yes. Aaron's voice is struggling. Well, you you yes. start us here. So, yes. w- w- what's your initial reaction to this text? Well, uh, the uh, the the phase two restrictions, notwithstanding, yeah, whatever I the I don't know. Um, this is uh, this is a, a one of these low points. You know, Ahab is the king, and Jezebel. You know, Ahab and Jezebel, sort of the the. Uh, dynamic duo of of Baal worship um, they've led Israel you know into this dead end I think the drought's been going on for five years or so I can't can't really remember but um, Elijah is a thorn in the side yeah. uh, to Ahab and he he just has continued to be that uh, Ahab has referred to Elijah as the troubler of Israel uh, because he and and that by that Ahab meant that Elijah just keeps reminding people that the Lord is God and that they are running after somebody that can't see, hear, or respond um, in in the person or the uh, the form of Baal. <clears throat> and Elijah has told Ahab, "I haven't brought trouble on Israel. Right. You have." Right. And and people that bring trouble in this way, don't want to hear that, right? And so he's... That's exactly right. He, he's fighting back against the, the truth that, yes. that Elijah is speaking. Yes. And, and he has... Uh, Ahab... Ahab and Elijah do have an interesting relationship. It's not like uh, Elijah's relationship with Jezebel, who just couldn't stand him and wanted him dead. Ahab, you know, sort of was at least, res- you know, responsive to Elijah and... He agrees to, you know, set all this stuff up on the top of Mount Carmel. I yeah, guess. I believe so. Yeah, Carmel, Carmel. Caramel. Reminds me of Caramel, Mount Caramel. Uh, anyway, yep. they they. Um, so it, it's just it's a. He, Elijah seems to be taking uh, great pains here to say there's no tomfoolery at work here. Um, I'm, you know, this is a. You know, clearly it's it's a drought. They're using a whole lot of water here, but he is he's wanting. He doesn't have any time for any nonsense. Uh, he just says uh, this this is going to be it's a it's a showdown perhaps in the eyes of the people with Elijah. It's it's not a showdown because yeah. it's no contest right. at all. Right. But um, he just wants people to to know that he is not. He doesn't have anything up his sleeve. He's not a, right. a trickster. And he is uh, going against um, interests here by dousing the altar with water and um, saying, you know, God is not um, going to fool you today. He's going to show himself. Yeah, and and right, prove 
his power, yes. um, his authority over yeah. the whole situation. Exactly. Yeah. Aaron, what, what's um, your reaction here to this text? Well, I'll, I like Elijah, um, particularly because we get to stay with him a couple weeks and we get to see the other side of ministry, mm-hmm. sometimes the, the valley that ministry walks in, but that's, that's for another day. Today is uh, um, one of these great stories of mm-hmm. uh, just, there's so many characters, there's so, so much drama involved. Um, but as you look, walk with Elijah through this process, um, the first thing he does is repair the altar yeah. to kind of fix what was broken. Mm-hmm. Now, let's be clear. You, you, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you don't have to fix things before you, you, you know, that we, and we say that all the time, but we need to make clear that, that Elijah was one who walked with the Lord and his, his job was to repair the, the broken relationship with Israel and God. And so he was um, doing what he could to and, restore. And, and the altar intentionally represented, it mentions the 12 tribes That's and right. stones, right? That's this, right. This, it's an intentional effort to, to recognize that reconciliation. So he, here he goes as an ambassador of the Lord to try and, and mm-hmm. repair and, and fix. Um, and then he goes and does all the things, all the, all the drama to make sure that you knew that there was nothing that, that, that he could do of his own power to make this, this work. And then he says something incredible. Make sure it's clear, Lord, that you are honored mm-hmm. here today, and I'm just your servant. Mm-hmm. All I've done is just prepare the way for you to show your right. glory and your majesty. Elijah here, and, and you know, Elijah's one of these guys that that that, that, that the disciples were talking about. Right. This this is this is a a, a paragon of of right. um, of the of the faith. But he's saying, make sure, Lord, that that whatever happens here, that you are glorified, and I have just been your servant. Yeah, amen. And he, he's not <clears throat> he's not too kind to Baal either during <laughs> this. Uh, you know, he's he's had it up to here with with Baal, and he you know he says something like, uh, maybe you know maybe he can't hear you, you know, or maybe he's gone on vacation or he's traveling, you know. Yeah, right. I uh, I love the, the the larger context of this story, the taunting right. that he does, right? I mean, and it's I mean it I, I, that's hu- there's humor. There's, there there's, is. There's a little bit of, uh, yeah, that, that, that taunt that happens. And so. This is Baal. Please leave a message. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, <laughs> but when he gets down to it, and, and you said he's a man of business, he was, he, you know, when, he, when it came his turn, yeah. Yeah. you know, after, okay, you guys done? <laughs> okay. Now we get serious. <laughs> All right. Uh, Brian, what question do you have in the text? Um, I, Elijah w- was. He was. I mentioned that he was stern. He he did seem to. He does seem to have a stern side. And and I think more rightly, uh, Aaron said he was moody, and and he he is. Um, where? How did Elijah? Um, how did he stand it? How did he stand it when uh, things were just? Like uh, like facing Jezebel or well, what, what do you mean? Just things were so bad around him that he just in the nation in the nation yeah, yeah. just the state of the nation the state of everything you know uh, it, it's sort of like you know when when you, somebody is watching a you know one of these twenty four hour news channels or whatever and and you your it affects your mood yeah, yeah. you know. And you can just get, I mean, whichever end of the spectrum you're yeah. on, you know, politically. It, I, I just feel, I, I wonder if Elijah ever felt like he'd just yeah. watched, you know. Uh, uh, in, in that way. Yeah, and, and I'll say news. to that end, there was, there was a number of times during the pandemic where I had to counsel people in that way, where people were deeply hurting. And the primary cause really was they were watching 24-hour news networks every waking moment of the day. Yeah. And you can't do that. That's, that's not healthy. And your your life uh, will just end up in a depressing mess if you watch twenty four hour news right. all day every day. Now, now later he he kind of did he sort of got in that state. Not yes, sort he does. Of, he did. Yeah, get yeah in that he state. does get in that state. Um, There's nobody and, but me. So right. <laughs> right, exactly. I am the only one. I'm the only one. Left. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> and and so I I just um, how. How do you stay resilient uh, with the Lord? 
uh, yeah. you know, in relation to the Lord? How, how do you do that? And I, and, and I, I guess, I mean, I'm, I'm answering that in my head. You know, there's this and that, and you know, but I, I think the question is always before us: uh, how, how can we um, continue to stay hopeful and not despair? Yeah. You know? Brian brings up a good question. I think that because when you look at the patriarchs, you know, Noah was a lone gunman. The, yeah. o- the only word that was given was given to Noah, and he had to, in the middle of a desert, build a boat, right. and and he had to do it by himself. Right. You know, Moses was was given his word. Uh, Samuel, you know, when when the, the people are crying out for a king, and, and he's the only one talking to God, and and yeah. and, and God says to him, "Listen, they're not they're not going against you; they're going against me." Yeah. yeah. And all these guys who ha- had these moments of just absolute, just it's me and you, God. Right, and I mean, I think the foil to that New Testament wise is we are never alone. I mean, we, yeah. we the, the Holy Spirit with the gift of that, and you know, we can feel pretty isolated, but mm-hmm. but we we can know that hope. Um, that doesn't mean we're not going to walk valleys. I mean, right. Bible promises that, doesn't it? But but we, you know, the gift of the Holy Spirit to just kind of get us that next breath, that yeah. next step. Um, there's. So, what is your question? My question is. You know, as we as we look at Elijah, and and one of my favorite um, the start of Psalm one fifteen is one of my favorite verses, particularly as someone who stands up in front of people. Um, it's not to my name, but to your name, Lord, be gl- give glory. That that um, that when when we do something, that we make sure that we are always humble enough to realize that God got us here. God has, God has given us a calling and it is not for our glory, but for his. Yeah, and so, so may we be like Elijah. And so I guess the question is when we do something, is our motivation self-serving or is it to, to honor the Lord? And, and what are we doing to take the steps to make sure that he is glorified and we are not? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this passage as well. Uh, if you would comment below.